Hi, my name is Sterling Waymire, and this is the instructional video podcast number one. We're going to go over the basic features of the MacBook Pro. First is viewing file information. What you're going to want to do is double click depending on what type of mouse selection you have and go to get info. Here you'll see every single thing you need to know about your file. The size, time, where it's located, you can even label it. The last time it was open, the extension, and the file image. Also, in Finder, it's the same exact way, but I'll demonstrate it for you. Anything that is a document can be clicked on and put in the Get Info. And it'll bring up the same information. As you can see, it shows your preview and all your information on the file. Next is creating a smart folder. What you're going to want to do is go up to the top and click Find, which is also Command F. Here you can pick anything on your MacBook Pro, no matter where it's at, by putting it in the search bar at the top right. So for instance, I'll put Watch for one of my favorite albums. Once you see the files, you can pick whatever you want out of each and every file that shows up to save into a folder. That easy. You can pick where you want to save it, what name you want to save it, and you can also add it to the sidebar for easy convenience. I'm not going to save this file, but I'll just show you the example of how you would pick your location and save the name. Then you would go down to the bottom and click Save. Alright, next we have creating a stack folder. Any folders that you want to pick, I suggest you put them on the desktop for easy click and drag. I use the trackpad so it's a little more difficult, so I'm going to put these folders towards the bottom. On the other side of that dotted white line, make room until the icons space apart and you'll create a stack folder. When you click, all the images inside are the files inside the folder. To add another folder, just drag and drop to the stack that you just made, and it'll go inside with it. There's the folder right there, and all of its contents. Now to delete a stack, you just simply drag it to the desktop until it does the little poof effect. Or you can move it to the trash can, and it will not delete the actual contents. Next up is Doc Preferences. To change any Doc Preference, click the Apple icon at the top and go to Doc, then Doc Preferences. From here, you can choose any selection to customize your Doc. Minimize windows in the application icons, animate opening applications, automatically hide and show the Doc, show indicator lights for open applications or checkboxes. Everything else are sliders and buttons and drag down boxes. These all have different customizations for the size, hover over magnification, and position on screen. And as you can see, I'm just tinkering around to show you the different effects that you can have with your dock. I like to hide mine if I'm not showing the dock, so I'll click that box back and exit out. How to force quit. If an application isn't responding, simply go to the top and choose Force Quit. A window will open up with all the applications that are currently running. Find the application that you wish to close and simply click Force Quit. It will tell you that you'll lose any unsaved changes, so make sure to save any files, any documents, any progress that you made before Force Quitting. Now as you can see, the application is quit. Simple as that. How do you Spotlight? Spotlight is a super search tool. At the top, click the magnifying glass at the top right. Start typing in something that you're trying to find. For instance, I'll type garage for garage band.
Here, all of my files containing the word garage will show up, whether it's a folder, application, document, music, or simply if I want to look up the word garage. From here, you can click show all in finder at the top, and this will bring up the smart folder window. Again, you can choose all in every file that you want to and click save to make a smart folder. And also put it on the side in your favorites. Up next is security preferences. From the desktop, simply go up to the top and click the Apple icon and go to system preferences. Next, look for security and privacy. Here you can choose from file vault, firewall, or privacy, but we'll keep it simple. The first selection is require password for a certain amount of time after sleep on the screensaver begins. At the bottom, you click the lock and the administrator will have to type in their password so you can start making changes. Here I'll type in my password and it'll change the lock. Now I can open up any type of security and privacy preference that I want to. And when you're finished, you simply go back down to the lock and click it. System Preferences. This really should have came first so you know how to get to all the other options, but you just go back up to the top and click System Preferences. This controls all the basic functions and major inputs on your MacBook Pro. CDs and DVDs, keyboard, mouse, trackpad, mission control, the dock, the screensavers. Also third-party applications at the bottom. Also, you can click the button at the top that says Show All to show in a different form of box for easier access. Another way to get to System Preferences is through your dock with the icon with the gears in it. It'll bring up the exact same window as if you went to the top and picked System Preferences. The third way is an actual simpler way. You can double click and it'll show a list instead of images or opening up the box itself. Changing your wallpaper. To change your wallpaper, you simply go up to the top and click the Apple icon and go back to System Preferences. From there, choose Desktop and Screensaver. Apple comes with pre-installed pictures of random objects, such as the outer space look, the lion, the valley with the eagle, and so on. You can also choose from iPhoto or simply folders in your picture files. If one of your selections don't come up, you can simply take them to the desktop, find the file that you're looking for, open it up, and simply drag and drop the image up to the top where the current wallpaper is, and it'll change just like that. How to use the Energy Saver. To use Energy Saver, go to the top where the Apple icon is and click System Preferences. Look for the light bulb that says Energy Saver. From here, you can pick different options to utilize your battery usage. Make sure to click Battery and Power Adapter separately to make different changes while the charger is hooked up and while it's unplugged. Another important tip is Make sure the show battery status in menu bar is checked. That way you'll make sure that your battery doesn't die until the last minute. As you can see, I have different settings between battery and power adapter. I like to have more energy used while it's charging. You can pick a schedule and you can also restore the system defaults.